One of the core fundamental values in our tradition, one whose importance is often forgotten in the modern age and in the Western world, is the virtue of tawakkul. It's complete or total unrelenting reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Tawakkul is one of the most powerful tools we have as believers that regularly in the face of life's trials and tribulations, it becomes not only a virtue, but a source of strength and resilience for us as Muslims. It's a concept deeply rooted in the teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah, and is the act of placing our complete trust and our complete reliance solely in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all aspects of our lives. Derived from the root word wakala, it means to hand oneself over to another, or to rely upon something other than oneself. In essence, it's a balance that is found by surrendering our affairs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while simultaneously taking the necessary means within our own capabilities temporally. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran emphasizes the importance of tawakkul in numerous verses. He says subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَذًّا غَلِيدَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْفَذُّ مِّنْ هَوْلِكَ فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَوِرْهُمْ فِي الْعَمْرِ فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ So by mercy from Allah, you were lenient with them. And if you had been rude in speech and harsh in heart, they would have disbanded from about you. So pardon them and ask forgiveness for them and consult them in the matter. And when you have decided, then rely upon Allah. Indeed, Allah loves those who rely upon Him. Here, this verse illustrates the relationship between consultation or shura and reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu is advised to make decisions from amongst the believers and to seek their counsels and affairs concerning them. However, while he's advised to take this consultation, he's reminded, and we're also reminded by extension, to remain steadfast in faith and to, remain, to maintain reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the ultimate provider and judge amongst his creation. In essence, we're reminded here through the example of the best of creation that whilst we seek advice and make decisions amongst others in our reality, our ultimate trust must remain in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as our guide. Our struggle in this life here is striking a balance between the divine and the actions of the temporal. Now as we learn ever so painfully in multiple circumstances that unfortunately this dunya in which we abide is not a paradise consisting of roses and bliss, of milk and of honey, Instead, this life is a series of tests and trials and tribulations. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forewarned us that we were supposed to expect this during our stay in this realm. He says subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُعِي وَالنَّقْسِ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ And will surely test you with something of fear and hunger and a loss of wealth and lives and fruits. But give good tidings to the patient Tribulations come in various forms, testing our patience, our faith, and our perseverance. We look no further than the reality of those currently interned in Palestine. It is during these challenging times that the true strength of one's tawakkul is revealed. Where does one go during their darkest times? Well, unfortunately, it's a reality that for many of us, when the going gets tough, sadly, we get going. We, some of us, we turn to weakness, to illicit substances, to inebriation, to apostasy, to a lack of faith, to crime, to cheating, etc. But the best of us, what do we turn to? We turn, of course, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's easy and it's also encouraged to be grateful and reliant upon Allah when our bank accounts and our bellies are full and our minds are clear. But it is difficult and then requires deep, unrelenting faith to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to give oneself over to Him completely when faced with the reality of tribulation and struggle. But we, lead, that we need look no further for a real world contemporary example of this than to an extent the reaction of those in Palestine when facing a tribulation such as the one that they're in currently. They're exercising true tawakkul in the face of sheer torture and certain eradication by saying that we will not be coerced, we will not be turned from our faith. And we know, we don't simply believe what we know, we are certain beyond a shadow of a doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be our provider, not only in these times, but now and forever. So how do we become like this? 
One of the most effective ways to maintain tawakkul during tribulation is by strengthening our connection with our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can establish this through prayer and supplication and remembrance of our Lord. Remembering his words when he says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ إِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَاتَ أَدَّعِي إِذَا دَعَان And when my servants ask you concerning me, indeed I am near. I respond to the invocation of my supplicant when he calls upon me. Engaging in regular acts of worship not only brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it also instills in us a sense of peace and reliance on his wisdom and his mercy. For how can we be truly reliant upon anything when we do not have an established relationship with that thing? Who do we turn to when we need advice or someone to discuss our deepest, darkest secrets with? Do we turn to the nearest stranger and strike up a very strange conversation? Hey, I know I just met you and this is crazy, but I wanted to let you know that I just went bankrupt. Uh, not necessarily. That would be a very strange opening line to a bus stop conversation. Instead, we turn to those whom we've established the deepest of connections with, our parents, our friends, our relatives. Instead, we should look to establish our closest relationship instead with our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and turn to Him when our hour is darkest and our need is greatest. And how can we do this but only by maintaining our worship and our remembrance of Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now just briefly to discuss the nature of tribulations, often within the imperfect mind of the human being, Tribulation may appear perplexing and unfair. But as believers, we trust in the wisdom of Allah and know that His wisdom far supersedes anything within our own understanding. By, re by reflecting upon the concept of qada, we acknowledge that everything happens happening in us and around us only exists and occurs by the decree of our Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa asa an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khairun lakum. But perhaps you hate a thing and it is good for you. And perhaps you love a thing and it is bad for you. And Allah knows while you know not. By understanding that His wisdom surpasses our own limited human comprehension, we can accept trials with patience and trust in His greater plan. But of course, that is easier said than done. So we must reflect and learn about how we can internalize this understanding. While we should realize that deeply intertwined with tawakkul, similar to a key that unlocks a door, is the virtue of sabr, of patience. This is the key that unlocks the door to establishing tawakkul in our daily lives and inside of our minds. We need to have the patience in face of tribulations that are delivered to us from our Lord. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assures us that with every hardship comes ease, and that during difficult times, exercising patience becomes a means of drawing closer to him. The Prophet ﷺ reminded us of this, letting us know that the affair of the believer is strange, but that all of our affairs are good for us. He reminds us that when something pleasing befalls us, we are to give thanks to Allah so that it can become better for us. And that if something harmful befalls us, we must also be patient so that that can become better for us. This is what separates the believer from the rest of creation. Patience is not a passive acceptance. It is an active, steadfast endurance with a hopeful heart grounded in the belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and relief will follow these trials that are temporary. It's the pathway to establishing true tawakkul in one's life and can be seen as an exercise in establishing reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our daily lives that then becomes strengthened even more so when faced with adversity. In this sense, tawakkul is not to be confused as a call to passivity, but about a balanced approach of trust and of action. We are encouraged to take practical measures while trusting in Allah's plan, as the Prophet ﷺ very famously advised us to trust in Allah but tie our camel. This metaphorically signifies that while we place our trust in God, we must also take the necessary precautions and make sincere efforts that are within our means. For instance, when we face financial difficulties, which to be quite frank, for those of us living in the Bay Area, we often do. We go out and we seek employment and we engage in lawful business while trusting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open one of these paths for us should they be fruitful for us. Or if we're dealing with health issues, we go and consult medical professionals and follow up their advice while also relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for true shifa. So we should then remember that with tawakkul must also come shukr. It is easy to be grateful in times of ease, 
but maintaining gratitude during times of hardship expresses a higher level of faith and helps ground one's tawakkul sincerely and truly. Expressing gratitude in the face of adversity shifts our focus from what is lacking to what we still possess. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that if we give thanks by accepting faith and by worship, He will increase us. But if we are thankless, then His punishment is most severe. Gratitude in the face of tribulation is an acknowledgement that every breath we take is a mercy. And through recognition of these blessings, we can elevate our reliance upon Allah during challenging times. How many of us sit and ponder upon the mercies and the blessings that we are given at any single moment of any single day? Do we ever worry about taking a breath, about the blood in our body spreading throughout, or about our hearts beating on a regular basis, for example? Not typically. Instead, we rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ensure that these things happen subconsciously. But do we thank Him for this? Or do we instead thank Him when we get that big bonus at work and finally get to get that cyber truck that we can park in reverse? Uh, or do we need, we need to instead think about these things and establish gratitude for the things that we don't even need to actively think about, that occur simply out of the mercy of our Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now more precisely, something that we often don't focus on is establishing tawakkul within the particular realm of our privileged environment in contemporary America. As we navigate our daily lives, specifically in this country, in this time, and in this day and age, we usually take the necessary steps to pursue often secular education, secular careers, and personal growth within American culture and community. But we should also ensure that we do all of this while still adhering to and maintaining our reliance in the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether in our professional endeavors, our educational pursuits, or our community involvement, our actions should always reflect the virtues, the values, and the principles endowed upon us by our, by our beloved Prophet wasallam. By embodying ethical behavior, honesty, and kindness, we can contribute positively to the often Islamophobic society that we live in, a society that in today's day and age is very counter to Islamic values and traditions. So while living in this society may not always align with our values, and frequently it, it often doesn't, Practicing patience becomes an essential expression of our tawakkul. It is through our steadfastness and our resilience, without bending to major attacks on our tradition and calls to radicalize our beliefs, that we showcase the beauty of our tradition and its transformative impact on our lives. We need look no further than popular culture in the wake of the gen genocide in Palestine. World-renowned social media personalities and mainstream celebrities are converting and bringing attention to Islam in a way that was previously unheard of in American mainstream culture. However, with this spread of Islam in America, we need to remember that the onus then, the duty, falls upon us to be active and responsible citizens as representatives of this deen. We should demonstrate our reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our daily lives as our guiding source and sustainer. This is our contemporary example for those who are contemplating conversion or for new Muslims to pick up on and follow in our path. And of course, one of the best ways we can do this is by increasing our spiritual knowledge. Tawakkul is closely inter intertwined with knowledge and understanding. It's another one of the core tenets of our tradition, knowledge and understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala urges us to seek knowledge and to reflect upon His signs in the universe. He says He will then elevate those who are faithful and He will raise those with knowledge and rank. We should, we should seek to acquire knowledge not only about Islam but about the society that we live in so that we can empower ourselves to navigate contemporary challenges in America with wisdom, with grace, and with discernment. Continuous learning is itself a form of tawakkul as it aligns and expands our understandings with the guidings and teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the guidings and teachings of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Going hand in hand with this understanding though is our acts of worship in the face of our reality as Muslims living in America in the 21st century. Our greatest source of reliance it should be on, upon, upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the external demonstration of this is done by maintaining our prayers, our regular recitation of his book, the Quran, and our frequent repentance so that we are grounded in our faith and so that these can serve as a source of our strength and our resilience in the face of the reality of modern American life. These spiritual practices provide the foundation for living with true tawakkul in the midst of the diverse 
and culturally different life of Muslims in America. Aqooli qooli hadha wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafoorur rahim tuba illallah ya tawab tuba alayna.